So I'm, uh, I'm late and I'm hassled. And I'm driving along a country road here pretty fast. And not too fast, I'm not breaking the speed limit or anything. And uh, <coughs> when you read about people who are enlightened, they, um, you know, they're all supposed to be calm and peaceful. And I know when I used to read about people who are enlightened, I was like, oh, and being enlightened, that's the end of being hassled and late for things and whatnot. But um, I'm enlightened. I've been enlightened for nearly 20 years. Well, no, not nearly 20 years. 96, whatever that is, uh, 17, 18 years. And, uh, and here I am driving along, hassled. Uh, not super hassled. I mean, that's not to say I don't get super hassled. I do about certain things. But uh, I know that I used to use that idea of uh, that, you know, once you're enlightened, it's all sweetness and light. Uh, as a way to stop, one of the many ways I used to stop myself uh, becoming enlightened. And it's funny uh, about when you get enlightened, or what I've observed about getting enlightened. It's a bit like, um, I heard somebody talking about uh, being a vegan the other day, and they were saying like, when before you're a vegan, uh, nobody cares what you eat. You could go to McDonald's seven days a week, uh, 24-7, have all your meals in McDonald's, and nobody really would comment on it, how much soft drink you ate, uh, how much salt you put in your diet, how much sugar you had, all these kind of things, no one cares. But as soon as you say you're a vegan, it's like it's everybody becomes the protein police. They're like, oh, where are you getting your protein from? And like, oh, how do you do that? And are you sure you're getting this? And are you sure you're getting that? It's pretty much the same with being enlightened. That's my experience of t t you know, telling people. I didn't I haven't told many people uh, other than, you know, in books and uh, podcasts and whatnot. But like just personally, uh, very few people. But it's surprising the number of people that I did tell it to. And I only ever said it to, to somebody to sort of, because I thought it would, you know, help in some way, because it was a huge help for me becoming enlightened. Um, and it's the same thing. It's suddenly like, oh, well, you can't get annoyed. Oh, no, you can't get angry. You can't get all that kind of thing. Which, once you're enlightened, like, once I, you know, became enlightened, I realized it's complete bullshit. Like, it's just, being enlightened for me is nothing to do with uh, all of that kind of stuff. That's that's all kind of similar to the idea of celebrity, and in a way, uh, there are you know you don't hear many people like on the nine o'clock news uh, talking about you know this person got enlightened the other day or whatever. We don't do that. What we do, do talk about is the Oscars and who's in the pop charts and what did Miley Cyrus do and stuff like that. And we have shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians where. Uh, we glamorize uh, other people that what they look like the sort of lifestyle they have the money they have and the assumed happiness and by, and it's all as a way of making ourselves feel like there's something wrong with our life that yeah that uh, if we're a little bit unhappy that oh well that's it like I'm a complete failure in life because uh, you know every time uh, I watch the Kardashians or I watch a movie or, or whatever, everyone seems to have this perfect life that I don't have. And that's our version of it. But the exact same thing applies to uh, being enlightened. Uh, it's all advertised. The advertising uh, for enlightenment is um, that you'll be a certain way. But my experience of becoming enlightened is that uh, it's nothing to do with any of that sort of stuff. For me, it was that base baseline question I had about myself. The fundamental underpinning of my whole being was in question for me. Uh, that there was fundamentally, that there was something I, I had to become. I had to become a certain way. I had to become a, a certain type of uh, person, being, spiritual entity. It didn't matter basically what it was was saying that where I was right now in this moment wasn't right there was something wrong with it and that somewhere down the track at some future moment uh, if I did a certain thing if I you know did a uh, changed myself in some way if I had some fantastic insight if I meditated enough if I didn't eat meat if I ate meat if I drank if I didn't drink if I smoked but it doesn't matter what it was uh, you know you'd read one book and it says do this thing and you'd read another book and you'd read about some other person who was supposedly you know supposedly but somebody who was enlightened and I was like oh that that must be it I must be like that if I'm not like that then I you know I, I'm, I'm wrong 
that, that, that's basically what what not being enlightened was for me it was was somewhere that's basically going this I'm wrong where where I'm at right now is wrong and uh, if I become enlightened then I'll be right and uh, becoming enlightened for me wasn't uh, was about um, realizing that I wasn't wrong I wasn't about becoming right as, as such but it, was, it certainly was realizing that that fundamental assumption that I needed to change in some way was uh, wasn't that wasn't correct that uh, the way I was and the way I am and the way I continue to be is right everything is right and I don't mean like I'm right and I haven't made any mistakes since I've been enlightened I made some whopping huge mistakes but <coughs> um, the underpinning of who I am has I, I've never questioned it since I've never kind of had that uh, feeling of uh, something wrong uh, that you know there's something uh, that I could that I should fix about myself right I've arrived at my destination I don't think I've been as late as I thought it was going to be. Somebody said to me the other day that phrase, there's my truth, there's your truth, and then there's the real truth. And I've heard that expression loads of times, and I don't think it's right. I don't, I don't have any proof that it's right. I've, there's only my truth or truth. See, truth is a funny thing, you know, because um, people talk about the truth like um, that there is this ultimate truth and y you're either in it, you're either with it or you're not. And if you're not, then you're deluded in some way or another. Uh, and a lot, of the, a lot of science is based on that, that there's like reality is a real thing. And um, I don't I don't really, I don't really experience that because all I experience is my reality. And when someone else is telling me, like a good example, like in practical life, is I'll be talking to somebody, and we both we both have been in a particular situation, uh, and share and, sh and apparently shared an experience, and then. It can be even 10 minutes later, but often it's a day later or an hour later. And we're talking about it and they'll say, oh yeah, well, that waiter had a blue waistcoat. And I'll go, no, the waiter was a woman and she was wearing a red waistcoat. And then this big, you know, difference of opinion will ensue. And there's this kind of idea like that, oh, well, we can go back and prove, you know, we can videotape the look at the surveillance cameras for this for the restaurant and go oh yeah see she had uh, it, I was right she had a, a, a red waistcoat and it was a woman and you're wrong and there's this kind of what comes out of that is this feeling of like that there is a real reality um, that we can refer back to and you're either in sync with it or you're not now the um, the difficulty with that is that it leads to um, conflict, serious conflict, uh, the sort of conflict where people kill each other over. Um, but you know, I I don't experience that um, every day, um, and I, I don't think most people do. I don't know if you do, but if um, what I experience is, um, I'll be talking to somebody I'm close to, and we'll be talking about. A conversation that we had for example and their interpretation of the conversation is completely different to my memory of it of it um, altogether and we don't I don't have the I don't record my life except when I'm doing podcasts <laughs> but I don't record my conversation so you can't go back and go see see I said that um, and what I've just what I um, have uh, come to is that I don't think there is a third reality. I don't think there is a bit in the middle. I don't think there's my reality and your reality and then the real reality. I actually think that there's just my reality and then there's your reality for you and if there's a third person there's their reality because everyone's uh, experience is, is so different and I think if everybody stopped thinking there was a real reality then 
there would be less wars. I think I think it would lead to world world peace. Now I'm not being smart or facetious when I when I say that. I, I actually do think that 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 would happen because um, when I think about most conflict that I have with people and that I observe people having with each other, it's all goes back to this idea of there there is a real reality that. Um, and we're kind of fighting over who owns it and who's most in in tune with it. Um, so um, I say something and then you say something and then you say back to me what I said and it sounds completely different and I go, well, I didn't say that. And you go, yes, you did. You did say that. That's exactly what you said. You said this and you implied that and, you know, that's what you meant and I and I'll be no I didn't I didn't say that at all this is what I said I'll say it again I'll say the exact same thing again and then the other person will come back no no you see you're doing it again and I'm like, what, what am I doing I didn't do anything I, I'm just I said the same thing again no you see you blah 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 now you can you can get really hung up on that um, and get into long protracted uh, conflicts that uh, can go down historically, and it's particularly to do with things that people really, really emotive about, like religion and politics um, and uh, money. Um, and science, unfortunately, gives us this idea that, oh, well, you can, you know, we can measure the real reality. And because we can measure it, uh, then we can prove that there is an external real reality. But what I've... Um, observed is that that's often more to do with repeatability and consensus meaning if I do if if you know if I throw a ball up in the air and it comes down uh, a thousand times then that's real um, and if I throw a ball up in the air and a thousand people observe me doing that a, th a thousand times then that's real because we've all agreed that we've all shared the same experience uh, but I'm not so sure that that's really real because each one of those people has had an experience themselves um, of looking at somebody throwing a ball up and down in the air a thousand times, uh, which sounds ridiculous, but then you don't think about a tennis match. Um, that would happen. A ball, you know, somebody throwing a ball, hitting a ball a thousand times. <clears throat> so you could say, well, that's that's real. That's measurable. We all saw that. But um, is it like if you think about like when I think about my uh, all I can talk about is my experience. And I can say, yeah, I sat there and I saw the person throw the ball up a thousand times. The ball went up in the air, came down a thousand times. And so, yes, that's probably reality. Gravity is probably a real thing. Um, and then you get into, oh, well, you've got to face up to reality um, because, you know, if you jump off a building, you're probably going to hit the ground. And. Um, in in the majority of cases, recorded history, that's what happens. But then, but then you get on you you know things that are on. There's kind of extremes of of reality, like gravity. Gravity is a good example of something that seems immutable. But then you get something like um, fire, like which has kind of got a, a gradual thing of like, well, if you put your hand in the fire, you're going to get burned. And uh, as a child growing up, uh, any time I, I remember burning my, my finger very badly with the kettle, and that was with steam, but it doesn't matter, still it was heat, and you know, you're told if you put your hand in the fire, you're going to get burned. Um, I don't think it ever occurred to me to actually put my whole hand in a fire, you know, that's what I was told. If you put your hand in the fire, you're going to get burned. But anyway, it was usually a finger, and, uh, and eventually I, um, you know, did get burned. Not badly, but uh, so I kind of went, okay, well, that must be, that must be real. But then years later, I did a fire walk, and uh, again, it's a very subjective thing. But uh, standing, you know, I lit the fire, and they, they they light this huge, massive, big fire, and then it burns down, and you got cinders. They're wood cinders, uh, but they're glowing. They're glowing orange, right? And and then they lay them out in a trough. The trough was about let's see, one, two, three five or six paces long so you know not short maybe that's 10 feet maybe 15 feet felt long 
and then you know there's a lot of preparation beforehand but then and then you but eventually you're standing in front of i was standing in front of this big thing of of uh, embers and um it was <laughs> it was terrifying because all my experience was saying you stuck your hand in the fire and you're going to get burned uh so when it came, you know, because the, the, the guy who was organizing it is called the fire master. And the fire master taps you three times in the back. You go. And uh, and he did. And there's mental preparations that you go through where you tell yourself you're doing something different to what you're actually doing. Um, so you're kind of, you're convincing yourself. I was convincing myself that I was walking along um, ice, an icy road with um, kind of pebbles or cinders on it icy cinders so that i did have the sensation of crunching and i could feel that all right but i didn't feel the heat, the heat on my feet uh, i could feel it on my face all right but not on my feet and then when you get down to the end you, you know, there's a kind of a trough of water that you go into and and uh, i didn't have any burns on my feet and quite a lot of the people that um i did it with I uh, didn't have burns on my feet. Now, I've since read loads of loads of scientific stuff about firewalks, and it's all proved very scientifically how the speed and the embers don't get that hot, and if you did it on coals. And, and that may all be true. But in my experience, uh, doing that kind of... It raised a question in my head about fire and, you know... Not every time you stick your hand in the fire uh, am, am I going to get burned. Not every time I stick my foot in the fire am I going to get burned. Because regardless of the scientific stuff and the explanations, I don't think that I could have walked across the, you know, the coals just normally. I think if I just walked across normally, I think I would have got burned. I, I seriously think I would have got burned. And some people did get um, what they're called um, hot spots. Uh, so their feet didn't get completely burned, but they did get little, little small circles of, of burn. Which, um, interestingly enough, uh, reflexologists were able to kind of, they were on hand and they were able to say, oh, that means your liver is weak, or they knew what the, you know, the lo by the location of the spots, they were able to say uh, what. And then, um, from what I remember, people you know that they that they did this diagnosis thing for, they were quite impressed with the accuracy of it. Didn't have that happen myself, so I don't know. Um, but the this idea of um, uh, that that reality started to bend a little bit for, for me then, or the idea of that a real reality started to dissolve a bit. Um, and as I have kind of continued on and start and you know I've reached these points uh, in communication with people where I've just kind of gone how can they how are they seeing things so differently to me um, we're both sitting in the same room we're both you know having the same conversation or we've both observed the same thing and yet what they're observing what they're telling me they're observing seems completely different like you may have had the experience where you're talking with somebody and they uh, you know, you share the same experience and then they describe, say, the person that, you know, they're watching a film or whatever and they see this person and they go, oh, yeah, he's just, you know, a bastard, definitely. Oh, yeah, he's just a a, a using, a user. Um, and you're looking at it going, God, I'm not getting that at all. You know, like I, I saw somebody um, looking at a, they made a comment on Facebook about a, a comic and they, um, they, they just they were talking about um, that the comic was completely avoiding two major issues, and uh, as I looked at it, both of these issues were addressed in this particular comic strip that they were commenting on, uh, and um, to me it was pretty obvious. Um, that, now, if I believed in that there's a a real world, I could kind of say, yeah, well they got that wrong, didn't they? Because it's pretty obvious that those two major issues were completely addressed in that comic strip and there. You know, what's wrong with them? Um, but what I've come to is, uh, in the in the face of that, I, I don't even think that what I experience is right and what they experience is wrong. For me, it's like, 
they're in a different reality to me and we're not actually sharing reality all we're, sh all we're sharing is communication so rather than this idea of you know a little little John on a planet uh, you know standing on a planet like a little drawing you know a little circle you know like a kid would do a circle with a person standing on it that's that's me on the planet it all it feels more to me like I'm that reality is looks spherical I think it's probably flat but it looks three-dimensional and um, I've no proof that it's three-dimensional because I can never see the third dimension you know you can't um, like Barry Long used to talk about um, the other side of things that you can never see the other other side of things and that is true uh, spooky when you actually <laughs> put go and look because if you go and try and see this, the other side of anything you can't see it because when you go to the other side you're on you're looking at that side but you can't see the other side of it like if you think of the other side not as a you know this is a and the other side is b and i go to b well i can see b so a must still exist if you don't assume that a, a still exists when you go to b you're and you just call the other side as b then if you go over to b B becomes A, and you're, you, the other side is flipped over. And but you still you could walk around a tree, and you'll never see the other side of a tree because, or anything, and a person you walk around them, you'll always, they'll always, you never see the the other side. And when you start looking at your reality like that, where you can never see the other side of everything, suddenly everything blends flat. It's like you're looking at a um, a flat picture. You know, if you look at a billboard, uh, you don't expect to be able to. You know, go from side to side and see behind things. So you just, you know, take it. That's that's just a flat, two-dimensional thing. But because with um, what we call reality, uh, and you, you can you move around things, and it has this appearance of three dimensions. We go, oh, yeah, it's definitely three-dimensional. Particularly because it's so interactive. If I move closer, things get bigger. If I move further away, uh, they get smaller. So it, yeah, it looks it looks very three-dimensional. Um, but if you don't assume that it's um, three-dimensional, it looks a bit flat and feels kind of wraparound. Let's call it wraparound. It's not really spherical, but it's wraparound. You know, I can see up to a certain height, you know, without looking up. My field of vision is a certain uh, uh, height. It's all to do with my senses as well. Uh, the feeling of depth and, you know, that it goes out there. Uh, but... Um, you can think of it like a bubble. I'm in my little bubble. My reality extends. Like at the moment, I'm in the kitchen in my mother's house. And, you know, I could kind of go, oh, well, I know the back garden is outside. I know there's an upstairs and there's an extra room. But if I stop assuming that and just say, well, visually, this is all I can see. And so the rest is an assumption. I can't see it. Um, I'm, it probably is there, but I don't know what's there for definite until I go out and look. Um, so this is my reality. And somebody else is having their reality, um, and because we can meet and go, oh yeah, this is that wall there behind me is kind of an orange color, and they'll say, oh yeah, that's an orange color, and we oh we agree, we agree that that's an orange color, so therefore it must be an orange color. But I'm not in their body, looking out of their eyes, so I don't know what their experience of what we have agreed on as orange is. I don't know what their experience of it could be completely different from mine. And yet, um, we both, you know, so based on that, we're, because we both agree on a name and, and words and the sound that, you know, that comes out of our mouth, like we're going to agree that sound I just made, orange, that's that color there. Because it just makes everything much handier if we can just agree that that's uh, what we're going to call orange. Um, but that's a simple thing like orange. But when you get into... Uh, you know, you've probably met people who everything, uh, everything is a drama for them. Uh, so you kind of look at them and go, wow, everything seems to be a drama. They've lost their keys. Their car got broken into. Um, they've got, they're always on threat of getting fired from their job. Their relationships are always a problem. Everything seems to be a drama for them, for example. And um, so you talk to them about something. You're talking with them about something. And you could be talking about a shared, apparently shared experience. And they're telling you about the drama of the event. And you're going, well, I had a great time. It was very relaxing. And I really, you know, I don't get it. I don't understand. Because there's, it looks like they're seeing reality through the drama glasses. I don't actually 
now now that that's true i i suspect that in their reality it is all drama that's it's not that they're they've got a bad take on the world or a dramatic take on the world that's actually their reality because if you stop if i stop um assuming that we've got this third reality that we're sharing and going now my reality is that things are generally pretty calm and relaxed um, uh, but uh, what they're telling me is that they're experiencing everything is like super dramatic and a big deal um, so that's that's what's going on in their reality and this is what's going on in mine so I'm not going to make them wrong and go no you're completely wrong my reality is actually the real one and you've got it wrong you know you're dramatizing everything and could because what i'm be saying there is stop stop messing with my reality i've just spent a lot of time getting everything calm and you're bringing all this dramatic shit into my life can you just stop doing that please whereas the the thing is unless unless it unless i do actually bring some reality into my uh into my uh, sorry some drama into my reality then what difference does it make they're just telling me about what's going on for them uh, it's not actually going to impact me that much. I mean, I feel sorry for them. Um, you know, meaning it doesn't sound like it's a lot of fun, all the drama. But then you talk to some people who, who love the drama. You know, they get a bit bored if they don't have the drama. So for them, like, it's kind of like, well, you know, it looks like you're, having, you're enjoying it. So great. I, would, I wouldn't enjoy it. I don't think I'd enjoy being stressed all the time about it. But it's not my, it's not my reality. Um, and I've found that science and scientists and people who like science, they, they don't like this idea at all. They get kind of like, they take it very personally <laughs> when you, uh, when you say anything about that, that reality is completely subjective and that there isn't any, um, uh, real in inverted commas, real reality, that it's all subjective and that we all, no, they don't like that at all. And that's fine, um, because they've got lots of ways of proving that there is a reality that God, that exists separate to me, that continues on when I sleep, when I've got no proof that, that, that that's the case, uh, that went on before I was born, you know, like history and, oh look, we've dug up this bone, this bone is 20,000 years old, therefore, the planet blah 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 the big bang and so on and I'm like, well that's great that's a lovely story but it's as real as my what i can remember in a way it's all just a story you know it's lovely i like the stories i like the stories about history but i don't i don't believe them i don't i don't um oh, because i've no experienced them i only experience what i can rem what i can remember and even the memory is gone you know because you know it's, <coughs> i've got I've got, you know, I've come across people who, you know, who I knew 30 or 40 years ago and they would tell me things that I said. I can't remember saying them, you know. And then there are other things that I remember vividly and I'll say to somebody, you know, like, I'll say to my mother, oh, I remember you did that. And she'd be like, really? Did I do that? Oh, I don't remember doing that at all. So, <laughs> the only thing that, that is real is what's going on uh, right now. Um, so, in the face of the history and like the whole thing about evolution and all this kind of thing it's a nice story you know it's grand but i don't get like it's a more believable story than um uh, creationism for sure but it's i don't think it's any you know i like i just like the creation uh, the um evolution story better um but i don't think it's any more real uh it's it sort of sounds real but again i don't take it too seriously uh, because I didn't experience it. I only have memories of my own consciousness uh, coming into, like, coming into awareness, uh, starting, I don't know, when I was two or something. That's probably about as far back as I can remember, two or three. <clears throat> Anything other than that is, you know, a story. And I don't... believe in it uh, in uh, because I, 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 I don't I can't I, I didn't experience the 1920s so it's just a nice story um, and again that's not to be it's not like 
I want to go running around the streets going, oh, history is not real, I don't really think it's real. It's, it's not that, it's just, just put a break on, on the collective kind of like, oh well, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte definitely existed, he was a real person. I never met him, I don't, you know. Um, the same with, um, um, who, you know, um, some big actor. I can't think of a big actor right now. Um, but Bruce Willis. I never met Bruce Willis. I've only ever seen him on the. I don't know. I don't know that part. Bruce Willis, Napoleon Bonaparte. They're as real as one is. One is as real as the other. Um, well, Napoleon didn't make movies, so does that make him less real? I don't know. There were more books written about him, I suppose. But what I'm saying is, like the 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 people that I have met, they're the only ones I have experience of, um, and um, they're more real. Let's say that. Uh, because I have a good experience of them, and uh, again, uh, this—I don't mean this to be—I uh, don't—I uh, don't mean it in a very egocentric kind of. It's all about me, and if I don't experience it, it doesn't exist. It's not so much that. It's—it's it's actually helps me uh, be more of who I am because uh, it helps me be more when I'm less when I have less to fight for or fight about. Like my reality and you know, and my way and uh, I believe this and I believe that. Then I can be more gives me a lot more space on the inside to see who I really am and who I really am uh, is compassionate and kind and loving and there's a lot of very pleasant, gentle, sweet stuff in there. That when I'm not defending whether you know, prehistoric blah blah existed or not, uh, I have actually more time to be my nature, to let it come up to the surface more. And I'm not looking at other people going, why do they dramatize things so much? Or why is that person so negative? Or why is that person so aggressive? Or why is, you know, that person so mean? When I'm, you know, when I'm just kind of looking at people going, well, that's them in their reality. And you know, if if we if our realities clash, then sure I have to deal with that. But mostly they don't. Mostly it's observational, and it's just you know if I'm talking to somebody and they're telling me um, how everybody in the world is a bastard, and you have to look out for number one. You can hear it and and go fine. Um, I mean, on the inside I'm going fine. That's 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 your reality. Uh, I wouldn't like <laughs> to be in that reality. It doesn't appeal to me. But if that's your reality, um, fine. So for me, it's my reality, and that's it. There's no my reality, your reality. There's my reality, then there's what you tell me from your reality, which I'll listen to and respect. Uh, uh, but and that's it. There's communication. That's all. My reality, communication, and uh, I don't think there is a real reality. some spaghetti.